Okay, for number one, again, my recommendation is to read it, try to understand what you've read, and then try to answer the question. So when a circular metal plate is heated in an oven, its radius increases at a rate of 0 0.02 centimeters per minute. At what rate is the plate's area increasing when the radius is 60 centimeters? I'm going to go to the whiteboard to do this. And again, as you, you should have the file uh, available to you. Give me one second. You should have the file available to you. I'm just going to you know, reread it. And this is question number one. And the problem with, with these problems over here is just reading and understanding what they've given you and what they're asking for. This is question number one. And what they gave me was they gave me uh, that they have a circular plate. It looks like this over here. Something like this over here. Uh, you know, there's a radius to it. And in the problem, they're talking about radius and they're talking about area. So the area of this surface over here is going to be pi r squared. All right, now what did they tell me? They told me the rate at which the radius changes with respect to time is gonna be 0 0.02 centimeters per minute. That's how fast the radius is changing. What's their question though? Their question is how fast is the area changing with respect to time when <coughs> the radius is 60 centimeters? All right, that's your question. So what do I do? I look at this relationship, and A and R are related, so I just took its derivative with respect to T. So dA dt is going to equal 2 pi r dr dt, implicit differentiation. So what's our question? dA dt equals 2 pi. What's r? Well, at the point uh, they, they want this is at 60 centimeter. So it's gonna be 60. I'll worry about the unit later, by the way. And what's DRDT? 0 0.02, which is two one hundredths. I wanna simplify that. And looking at it, let me just write that down for you. I know I got a pi, I'm not really too concerned about what the pi is, but um, it's, it's, it's certainly a number. So you get 240 pi over 100. All right, so what I'm gonna do over here is just, I think I can probably do a sum arithmetic over here. And I'll put the unit down in a second. I could say 2.4 pi. And what's the unit in that? Centimeter squared per minute. I put a little box in that, indicating sun. Uh, let's go to the next question. And to do that, I have to read it. Next question is number two. And, you know, this one, I think probably meant some students may not know the volume of an inverted cone. And I would give that to them on the exam, by the way. So let's take a look at the whiteboard again. Um, let me read it first. A water tank is the shape of an inverted, meaning upside down circular cone with base uh, radius two meters and a height of four meters. If the water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of two cubic meters per minute, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three meters deep. All right. Let me go back to the whiteboard. This is number two. I'm going to put my inverted cone down. This over here. And I'm going to say there's a, a height to this cone and there's a radius to the cone. All right? So I think they gave that to me. I'm going to go back and read it to you again. And they told me the radius is two meters. So the radius here is two meters. And they tell me the height of it and the height of that, I'm going to go back and read it, is four meters. All right? Now, not the best picture, but the bottom line, it's enough for me to figure this out. And again, remember I told you I would give you the volume of a cone. And the volume of a cone is going to be one-third pi r squared h. It's derivable, but I'd give that to you, all right? Now, again, I have to go back and wonder what the questions are. One thing they're doing, they're pumping water into this thing. They're pumping water. And so I'm going to say dv. They're giving that to me, dt. And this is a positive increase because they're pumping water in, not pumping water out. They're pumping water in at a rate of 2 meter cubed Per, I have to read the uh, document again, per minute. Then they ask the question is, how fast is the water level rising? And that's dH, dt, at a particular point in time. And that point in time they want to find out is when the water, or H, is three meters. This is a question. And unfortunately, I have a relationship now that involves too many letters in it. I want a relationship between V and H. So the way I would do that is look at the uh, cone, and I realize that R over H 
is equal to, well, it's going to always be equal to 2 over 4 for this particular cone, by the way. It's going to be similar triangles no matter where I am. Where I am. So this could be 4R equals 2H. And I want to get rid of the uh, R in the uh, volume equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I get 1 half of an H. So I'm going to write this down again. It's going to be V equals, that relationship was, again, given to you, 1 third pi, this could be squared, H. What's R? It's 1 half of an H. So I'll put H over 2. I'm going to simplify this, and what do you get? Let's see. You get pi, and on top you get an H cubed, and at the bottom you're going to get 4 times 3, which is 12. All right, so that's not so bad. What I'm going to do now, differentiate. I'm going to put down dV dt. This is implicit differentiation equals, well, the 3 comes down, and the 3 goes into 12 4 times, so it's going to be pi over 4, and it's going to be h squared dH dt. All right, what was your question? Well, the question is what's dH dt when the h is 3 meters? That's their question. Let's write this down. What's dV dt? Let's look it up. DVT, D, and again, I'll talk about units later, is 2. This is going to be pi over 4. What's H going to be? 3. So that's going to be 9. Because I'm squaring it, I get 9. DH, DT. Let's see if we can figure this out. Looks like we're going to get 8. I multiply both sides by 4, by the way. And then divide by 9 pi. And that's DH. Whoops, sorry about that. DH, D, DT. And I want to, you know, maybe simplify a little tiny bit. And um, there's not much I could do about that, is there? I'm going to put 8 over 9 pi. There's no, re no simple reductions, by the way. Then the question is, what's the unit of that? Well, if you go back and look at the units, they're going to be meters per. And let's go back up here and remind ourselves, per minute. So 8 over 9 pi meters per minute. All right, let's go to the next question. And that's going to be question number three. It says a ladder 10 feet long rests against a vertical wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? Boy, let's take a look. I'm going to draw a picture. And the picture is going to be of a ladder leaning against the wall. And there's some assumptions being made over here. One of the assumptions is there's a, there's a ground, there's a building, and there's a ladder. And the ladder is uh, fixed. Again, I gotta go back and read, I can't remember, 10 feet. This is a right triangle. I'm gonna say this distance over here, I'm just gonna call arbitrarily x, and this one over here arbitrarily y, all right? I know a relationship between those three letters, and the relationship's gonna be x squared plus y squared is equal to 10 squared, which is 100. That's a relationship I know. It's gonna be a useful one, by the way. Let me go back and read it to you again. It says the ladder, 10 feet long, rests against the vertical wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall, so they're telling me that dx, dt, is actually getting uh, bigger. And it's getting bigger at a rate of one foot per second. You know, that's pretty fast. Right? It says how fast is the ladder sliding down the wall? So really what their question is, what's dy, dt? And I have to read that. Uh, when the ladder is six feet, let me make sure I'm reading that right. Ladder sliding down the wall. When the bottom of the ladder is six feet. So really it says when X is six feet. All right? That's their question. Well, I got a relationship. Let's differentiate it. You're going to get 2X DX DT plus 2Y DY DT is equal to 100 to zero. So I think I could solve this. And I want to get DY DT, by the way. So DY DT is going to equal minus... 2x uh, dx dt. Now remember, there's a coefficient over here of 2y, but I'm just going to divide both sides by 2y now. And what's dy dt then? It's going to be minus x over y dx dt. So what I've got to do over here is figure this out now. I've got to figure out what x is. Well, x is given to me. x is 6 feet. <coughs> question is, what's, what's the y? I'm going to use this equation here to do it. x squared is 36 plus y squared, y is a positive number by the way, 100, y squared would equal 64, I took 36 from both sides, and you know y is plus or minus 8, 
But in this case over here, y is going to be 8. So let's write this down then. So dy dt, when x equals 6, I have all these numbers, by the way, it's going to be, let's see, minus x. That's going to be minus 6. The y determinant was 8. And what's dx dt? Got to go back up here. It's 1 foot per second, right? Yeah, 1 foot per second. I was going to put a 1 over there. So dy dt, when x equals 6, is going to equal to, um, let's see, minus 3 quarters. And I got to put the unit down now. I got to think back over here. Uh, it's going to be feet per second. So, although that, that I accepted, that's a good answer, by the way. We know it's going down. But they said how fast. And the, and the speed here would be, oh, it's going three quarters of a foot per second. And if you want to say downward, that's fine, by the way. But it is minus three quarters in the, in the analysis because it is sliding down the wall. So that one's done. Let's go to the next one. It, this, uh, they did very run-of-the-mill problems. Nothing substantially difficult. All right, this is uh, question number four. Again, it says car A is traveling 50 miles per hour and B is traveling uh, 60 miles per hour. And, you know, and one is um, car, car A is traveling west and car B is traveling uh, north. That's not so bad. Both are headed for the intersection of the two roads. At what rate are the cars approaching each other when A is 0.3 miles and B is 0.4 miles from the intersection. So I'm going to, again, go to the whiteboard. I need some room to do it. And this is problem number, let me get my paper out. I just have this printed out, by the way, question number four. And I'm going to draw a picture. And the picture is going to look like, you know, this is where the intersection is right here. And I'm going to say this is uh, north, this is south, this is east, and that's west. All right. So car A is traveling west, right, towards an intersection. So car A is over here, by the way. This is A. And he's traveling west towards that intersection, by the way. And I'm going to say over here that its speed is D. Let's see what we're going to put. I'm going to put X down. DX, because the X axis, right? DT. And that's actually, it's going in this direction over here. So this is actually getting smaller. So I'm going to say it's a rate of minus 50 miles per hour. All right? And let me, let me look at the other guy. And this guy's over here. And he's moving up. And that guy is going to be B. So B's over here somewhere, and he's traveling. i got to read this, by the way. And it says over B's traveling north. So he's over here somewhere. This is B. And I'm going to say this is Y now. Let's take a look at that. And I'll say, you know, that's also getting smaller. So DY DT is going to be minus 60 miles per hour. All right. Get back and look at the question, by the way. But, you know, i got a bunch of relationships over here. And I'm going to say, you know, this is X and this is Y. I'm treating these as positive distances now. So I'm going to say x squared plus y squared is equal to this thing over here, which is the distance squared. All right? So I got that part covered. I'm going to go back and read it. It says both are headed for the intersection of the roads. At what rate are the cars approaching each other? I want to point out this is the rate at which the cars are approaching each other. So I'm going to put that. They really want to know dd, dt at a certain point in time. And it says when A is 0.3 miles, so I'm going to write down X is something and Y is something now. So X is going to be, um, and that's car A, right, is 0.3 miles. And the other car, car B, is 0.4 miles. And these are in miles, by the way. Okay? So what do I do? I, I got my, my relationships, and I'll write them down for you. And you know, I got T, I'm sorry, 2X, DX, DT plus 2y dy dt equals 2d dd dt. I think I can write this stuff down, by the way. And, you know, one step at a time, so to speak. So the x is 0.3. Let's write this over here. So it's 2. I'm going to write point, point 0.3 as 3 tenths, by the way. It makes it easier for me to do arithmetic. And what's dx dt? Uh, that was minus 50. Put this over here. I'll put the unit down later, by the way. 2y, what's y? y is 0 0.4. What's dy dt? Minus 60. All right, and then what I get here, I get 2. Here's my problem, I gotta get d. And I'm gonna do that by looking at this equation over here to get the d. And I'm gonna square the x, that's 3 tenths, that's 9 one hundredths. 
and I can square the 0.4, which is 4 tenths. That'll be 16 one hundredths, and that'll equal d squared. And d is a positive number, by the way. So what do you get over here? You get 25 one hundredths equals d squared. So I'm, I'm kind of convinced that this is pretty easy at this point. This is just simply 5 tenths. Right, so I'll write that down, 5 tenths. And then it's going to be dd dt. And i got to figure this out. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That's pretty easy. What do you get there? I'm going to say minus 150 over 10. Oh, you know what I didn't do here? And let me go back and get my eraser out. I want to be consistent. Just give me a second to get my eraser out. Yeah, I'm going to write this uh, 4 tenths. Sorry about that. And what do you get there? You get minus 240 tenths. Over here, you get 5 tenths. And that's dd, dt. Well, let's see what you get. Uh, let's see, minus 3, 9, 0 over 10. And that's 5 tenths, right? dd, dt. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. They cancel off. And then I get minus 390. Divide by 5. I'm going to go through that with you. And the question is, um, what's that number? I'll put this in. It's 5 over 390. I'm sorry, 5 into 390. That's 7, 35, and 4, 0. So it's going to be seven, minus 78 miles per hour. That seems weird, but it's actually shrinking distance, by the way. But they say how fast they're approaching each other. That's 78 miles per hour at that point. All right, But they are getting the distance getting smaller between them. So let me just make sure I'm on right, right track over here and uh, approaching, yep. So let's put the next thing. And we're on problem number five. And number five, again, it's uh, a problem that you have to be able to read and understand what you've read. It says at noon, ship A is 100 miles west of ship B. Ship A is sailing south at 40 kilometers per hour. And ship B is sailing north at 20 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m. Round your answer to one decimal place. The whiteboard, and I'm gonna to try to draw a picture of this. And as I do that, again, your picture might look a little different than mine, but for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do that coordinate system again. And like there's a north, there's a south, there's an east, and there's a west, all right? So I'm gonna say, you know, at 12 noon, so let me go back and read it. 12 noon, ship A is 100 kilometers west of B. I'm going to put B here, and then I'm going to put this guy over here. He's west of him. And again, it doesn't have to be look like this, but this is this looks like a fixed distance to me, 100 kilometers. Right, and then I'm going to read it. It says, uh, ship A is sailing. Well, let me put this down over here. So this is where uh, A is um, 100 kilometers. This is A, and this is B, all right? So it says ship A is sailing south. So I know he's going like this over here. And when it says south, it's due south, all right? And the rate of this over here, and I'm just going to call this A now. Right? I'm going to say DA, DT. And he's going south at a rate of 40 kilometers per hour. All right? So let me keep reading it. I know he's going south, by the way. Uh, let's see. So... Let me be careful about this. Ship A is sailing south at 40 kilometers, and ship B is sailing north. Okay, that's nice. He's going like this over here. He's sailing north, by the way. And I'm going to call that DB, DT. And he's going north at a rate of 20 kilometers per hour, kph. All right? It says, how fast is the distance between the ships? Well, this is going to be a distance problem. And I'm going to look at that, and I'm going to say, you know, I hope you realize it's an increasing distance at this point, if they're, if they're selling apart, by the way. So let me write down, you know, sort of like a relationship over here that I'm seeing over here. And I'm seeing a right triangle problem, something like this over here. And I'm going to talk about the distance now. And it's going to be distance squared is equal to, well, let's take a look at that. And I'm going to say... Those dis distances are, are, are changing, right? So one thing I know about this over here, it's um, this is always going to be 100. I know that much. So I'm going to say 100 squared plus this thing here 
is definitely changing. All right? And I'm just going to call that... I'm just going to call it X now. All right? We'll figure that out later, by the way. So it's going to be X squared. So what I want to do is talk about a couple of different things over here about what, what, what the rates are. But before I do that, I want to keep reading it. And they say they want to know how fast the distance is changing, DD, DT, at a particular point in time. And that time is at 4 p.m. So I'm going to say at 4 p.m. So I'm going to say at 4 p.m. So what I want to do is I want to um, say that's my question. I don't know the answer to that over here. But I'm going to start writing things down, by the way. Before I do that, though, I want to point out I know what dx dt is. And let me point out that this is the x over here. And what's it going to be? It's actually just 60 kilometers per hour. I mean, they're, they're, they're leaving each other, right? So one's going 20 uh, to, to up, and the one's going 40 down. So, that, so the speed there is 60 kilometers per hour, all right? So let's write this down. It's going to be 2D, DD, DT is equal to 2X, DX, DT, all right? Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. They just disappear. But there's some things I, I really need to know. I need to know what uh, D is. But before I do that, I want to point out that I think I can get it from here, by the way. And someone says, how could you do that? Well, i got to figure this out. So I'm going to say D squared is equal to 100 squared plus the X. Now, someone says, what's the X here? Well, at 4 p.m., I hope you realize that this guy goes 80 kilometers by then. And this guy over here, well, he's going at a rate of 40, so that's going to be, and it, there's four hours of, of travel time. That's 160 kilometers, by the way. So what's the distance over there? Well, 80 and uh, 160 is 240. You can put a square in that. Uh, kind of nasty numbers, right? So what do you get there? Let me show I'm doing this right, by the way. D squared, 100 squared. Yeah, I got some troubles over here. I got to do the arithmetic. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to try to do it in the most peaceful way possible, for me anyway. And um, I don't know, I'm looking at that. It doesn't look that bad, but I'm going to kind of reduce the numbers over here. This is 100 times 100, and that's 240 times 240. The first thing I'm going to do is going to factor 100 out. From the first term, it's easy to do that. You get 100. From the next term, what do you get? Well, factor 100 out, I'm factoring 10 out from each of those factors, so it's actually 24 times 24, all right? And you might think this is a strange thing to do. Maybe it is. Maybe this is strange. You do your two way you like to do it. So I'm going to say 100, and then what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to factor out a 4 now. And what do you get there? Well, 4 from 100 is going to be 25. And if I took a 4 from the 24... That's a 6. So I get 6 times 24. All right, let's keep doing this. What do you get over here? Well, it's 100 times 4. And look at this now. And 6 times 24 is 120 and 24. And then I got a 25 there, right? You get 9, and that's going to be 169. That's not so bad, by the way. And that's what d squared is equal to. So what's d equal to? The square root of that, which would be 10 times 2 times 13. And what do you get there? i got to write that down, by the way. Uh, 10 times 2 is, well, 130, 260. All right? That's not so bad. So I got this. And someone said, what is that? I got the D, by the way. And let's write this down. So DD, we'll put the unit on later, by the way, is going to be uh, X. What was the X again? The X was, um, I just wrote it down too, didn't I? Oh, 240. Sorry about that. I'm going to divide by the D now. What's the D? The D turned out to be 260. And then I got this um, DX DT. And what was DX DT? Um, again, I think I wrote that down. Yeah, 60. All right. So what do you get there? Let's take a look at that. And um, D, 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 T. I got some cancellations over here. 24, 26. Uh, 60. Let me show you to make any mistakes in the arithmetic, by the way. Uh, 26, 260. That was D. I divide both sides by 2. 
X was 240. I'm just checking so before I go do some arithmetic over here because I think I wanted to approximate it. And I said the, uh, let's see, 80 and 160, 240, and the 260. That's not so bad. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at this over here. I'm going to divide now. What do you get there? Uh, 12 thirteenths times 60. Hate to do it to you. I'm going to do multiplication. That's going to be 600. Uh, because 10 times 60 is 600. And then 120. That's going to be 720 over 13. I got to do 13 into 720. I want to go back and see they do them at a round it. And that's always my problem, rounding things. I'm not going to go too far with it. And let me just take a look and see what I get here. I'm going to say 5. That's going to give you 65. And because 5 times 13 is 65. And then I get 7, 7, 0. And I'm going to say 5 again. That's 65. And they get a 5 over here. It's a decimal now because I want to go to the decimal place. And I'm going to say, um, well, I wouldn't say 5 again, but I would say probably 4. And 4 times 13, um, that's going to be, again, I'm approximate because I want that one. That's going to be 40 and 12. 52, yeah, I'm about right, 52. All right, so it's 55.4. And again, what's the unit in this thing over here? It's a distance, and those, I'm sorry, it's a uh, speed. It's going to be in kilometers per hour, so kph. Okay, let's go to the next question. That wasn't so bad. And these are run-of-the-mill problems, by the way. What do you mean by run-of-the-mill? They're really problems that you would see in just about any calculus textbook. They might change the numbers and the wording slightly, and uh, it's just the nature of the, of the subject matter, by the way. So the, the number six, again, this is also, it, it almost looks like the exact same problem that you see in almost any calculus textbook, by the way. Two sides of a triangle, not necessarily a right triangle, are five and eight, eight uh, meters in length. And the angle between them is increasing at a rate of 0 0.06 radians per second. Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is increasing when the angles between the sides, um, fixed lengths, I'm sorry, is uh, pi over three. All right, so what I'm going to do is go to the whiteboard. And, you know, I'm going to put down what they just said. And I'm not memorizing. I have the paper in front of me. And i got to get back to the question. Yeah, this is number six. And it says two sides of a triangle, not necessarily a triangle, are five and eight meters long. So I'm going to put this. I'm going to put the eight meters here. This is six, by the way. And I'm going to put the five meters over here. Maybe I went too long with that. But I'm just getting a feel for it. All right. And there's an angle over here between those. And you have to understand that, you know, this triangle is getting bigger. Uh, you know, I don't know what this side is at this point. I don't even need to know that. But the triangle, as that thing sweeps up, is changing its shape, by the way. It's changing its shape. So what I want to do is it says, you know, two sides of a triangle. I got those written down, five and eight, in length. And the angle between them is theta, is increasing. Let me read this over here. So they tell me d theta, dt is increasing at a constant rate of 0 0.06. And by the way, radian is not a unit, so I'm just going to put 0 0.06 per second. All right? So what do I do now is what the question is. The question is find the rate at which the area of the triangle... Well, I'm gonna, I know the area of a triangle, and you should know this too, is 1 half times the base times the height of it. And I want to put the height as the altitude. It's this thing over here. It's the height of it. So... I do know the base, so the area is one half, the base is eight times the height of it, all right? By the way, the height's definitely changing, but the bottom line is I don't want H. I don't want it, I want a theta, right? Because that's what my relationship is between A and theta. So I'm gonna write this over here, sine of theta is equal to, looking at that picture, it would be H over Five, all right. So I can write this down now. A equals well. I think one half of A is pretty easy. Is four, and what's height going to be? It's going to be five sine theta. All right. What I'm going to do here is just simplify this a little bit, and it's going to be twenty sine theta. And what I want to do is write it down. Da, dt equals. We'll get to that question in a moment. By the way, it's going to be twenty cosine of theta d 
theta dt. And they want to know how fast is the area changing at a particular, uh, uh, let me just take a look at that. Oh, when the theta is pi over 3. That's their question. Well, I think I can do this now, and I'll write it down for you. So dA dt, we'll put the units on it later, by the way, 20 cosine of pi over 3. And what's d theta dt? It's going to be 0.06. I'll put this over here, 6 one hundredths. You may wonder why I'm not going with decimals. I just prefer not using decimals. We'll put the unit on it later, by the way, but I want to work out the arithmetic on it. And pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and the cosine of 60 degrees is just a half. So I'm going to write this down for you. 20 times 1 half times 6 over 100. All right? Now, let's make sure I'm not making any errors at this point. So I'm going to say 2 goes into 2 once, goes into 20 10 times. 10 goes into 10 once, it goes 100 100 times. So this is going to be 6 tenths. All right? So someone says 6 tenths what? It's 6 tenths of something. All right? So let me just put this down. 6 tenths. Oh, you know, I can reduce that. That's going to be three-fifths. All right, let's go back, and, and um, this is going to be uh, the area of a triangle, right? So it's going to be meters squared. That's area. And what's the time unit on it? The time unit is per second. So meters per second. So it's going to be three-fifths metered squared. That's an area unit per second. All right, let's go to the next question, which I think is the last one. Let me take a look at it. And the last one, I think it's the last one, is number seven, all right? Now, it's number seven, I got plenty of room. I also want to point out, this is typical, uh, answers are being provided if you want to use those answers, all right? There is an error in the answer key, by the way, and the answer over here is, uh, I think one of the answers was uh, given a, a missed, I have to look at it again, but let me go back to the question. It says, a balloon leaves the ground 500 feet from an observer. So this is the ground. This is where the observer is. This is where the balloon is. And this is 500 feet. And the balloon is going straight up. All right? So a balloon leaves the ground 500 feet away from the observer and rises vertically. So I'm going to put down that this is y. And I'm going to say dy dt. It's going up, by the way. It's, it's going up at a rate of 140 feet per minute, all right? So it says, at what rate is the angle of inclination? Well, that's gonna be, he has to be looking up at the balloon, so they're asking for this over here. So let me write this over here. They're actually asking for d theta, dt. That's what they're asking for, that's their question. But they wanted a particular point in time, at what point in time? They wanna know increasing, the instant the balloon is 500 feet above the ground, so it's when y is 500. And that's 500 feet, by the way. So I need a relationship between the y and the theta now. And I know a relationship right off the bat, right? What's going to be over here? That the tangent of theta is going to be y over 500. I can differentiate. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. d theta dt is equal to 1 over 500 dy dt. And I'm going to uh, write down d theta dt for this one. And that's going to be, let's see, cosine squared of the theta over 500 dy dt. All right, let me get my eraser out and erase the stuff I put over here. All right, so let's take a look at this over here and see if we can write that down. So d theta, we'll put the unit down too, by the way, equals... Well, again, i got to remind myself, this is when um, you're at 500 feet. Now, granted, when you're at 500 feet, I hope you realize that at 500 feet, that this distance here would equal that distance over here. So the theta would have to be 45 degrees, all right? So I'm going to put this down for you. So I'm going to say this is really um, like, you know, at this point in time, and this is why it's 500 feet, by the way. So what's the cosine of 45 degrees? It's 1 over root 2. What's that squared? Let's write that down. It would be 1 half over 500. We'll do the arithmetic later, by the way. And what's dy dt? I can't remember. It's over here. It's 140 feet per minute. 
All right, let's see if we can do the arithmetic. And I'm kind of looking at that. And I'm going to take a half of 140, which is 70 over 500. We'll put the unit on a letter, by the way. That's going to be 7 over 50. All right, there's not much I can do about that. And they're not really asking for an approximation of the problem. But what over here, I'm going to just claim that the uh, answer over here is going to be um, radian, which is unitless, by the way, per second. So this is going to just be per second. And that's the correct answer, 7 over 50. Uh, I realize mistakes happen over here, but the unit of feet is not belonging there. What's, what they're asking for is the angle. How fast is the angle changing? The angle's changing at a rate of 7 over 50 seconds. Okay? Thank you. And that's it. Thank you.